Winter Wonderland Dinner Delights, a feast of flavorful ideas. Welcome back to my Winter Warmer series. Today we're making a comforting Hungarian classic, chicken paprikash. Let me know what your comfort dish is for the winter and I'll try to add it to this series, but for now, let's start with this delicious and comforting chicken dish. For this dish, we're gonna need four large chicken legs and we're gonna start by scoring them on the skin side. Then we're gonna coat with olive oil and season with salt and Hungarian sweet paprika. Set that aside and we can start working on our vegetables. We're gonna use one red bell pepper. Hungarian bell pepper is preferable, but I couldn't find any. We're also gonna chop one large onion. Then we're gonna slice and dice two large tomatoes. And we're always gonna need some garlic, so we're gonna chop and mince about four cloves. And then finally, cut up some parsley for later. Now butter's traditional, but it burns, so I'm using oil. And in a cold pan, lay your chicken legs skin side down and start rendering that fat until you get a nice color on one side. Then flip and cook on that side too. Once you get a nice color, take it out and add your onions in. And we're going to make sure to season with salt at every time we add an ingredient. Then add your bell pepper and your garlic and we're going to continue to saute that until it gets a nice color on it. Now we're going to add a little bit more of that sweet Hungarian paprika and a little bit of spicy Hungarian paprika. Once those have roasted off a little, we're going to go in with our tomatoes and let those cook down until a liquid forms. Once it's nice and saucy, go in with some white flour and mix that until thick. Then we're going to add our chicken back to the pan and bring everything to a boil with some chicken stock, cover and simmer for 15 minutes, then remove the lid and simmer for another 15 minutes until fully cooked. Take out the chicken, add sour cream in and let that mix until thick. Then to finish, we're just going to add the chicken back until it's heated through nicely. Usually this dish is served with a Hungarian nokdeli, but I can't find any and I asked my Hungarian friend, he said gnocchi is completely fine. So plate that up, add the chicken on top and some more of that delicious creamy sauce. And then for a little bit of color at the end, add that fresh parsley and enjoy. Welcome back to my winter warmer series where I'm making the most comforting dishes this winter season. Today we're making a delicious rendition of a beef stew. Do let me know what your favorite comfort dishes are and I'll try my best to add them to this series. But for now, let's get started by seasoning our beef with salt, paprika, black pepper, garlic powder and some flour. Mix that all together, set aside, and we can start working on our vegetables, which is going to be two large carrots, which we're going to chop into large chunks. Finally, chop some celery, and we're going to clean and slice some mushrooms. Roughly chop an onion, and then we're going to slice and dice some tomatoes. To make this stew more hearty, we're going to add some baby potatoes, which we're going to chop into large chunks as well, and we're going to finally chop some garlic. Over at the stove, we're going to heat up a pan until it's ripping hot, and then start searing off our beef until we get a nice crust. Then remove the beef. Add your onions and add salt to draw out moisture and let those saute a little bit before adding the celery and the garlic. We're going to saute those before adding some tomato puree and the seasonings we had from earlier. We're going to let that roast off before adding our tomatoes and deglazing with some red wine. Once the alcohol is cooked off, we're going to go in with our beef and get that all mixed in before adding our beef stock. We're going to simmer this stew for about 45 minutes before adding in our carrots, our potato and our mushrooms. Let that simmer another 45 minutes to get this nice thick stew. Turn off the heat and finish it with parsley before serving up in your favorite bowl with some beautiful garlic bread or white rice. Enjoy! This is the perfect curry to warm you up on a cold winter night. Welcome back to Winter Warmers where I'm making the most comforting dishes this winter season. Today we're making a coconut chicken curry. Let me know what your comfort dish is down in the comments, but for now we're going to start with three chicken breasts and we're going to cube them into large chunks, put them in a bowl and we're going to season with salt, black pepper, garlic powder and ground ginger, some cayenne, some chili powder and some turmeric and curry powder. Finally some cumin, coriander and some Greek yogurt. Mix that all together and let that marinate for about 20 minutes while you prep the rest of your ingredients including one onion sliced. Then we're going to mince up a thumb sized piece of ginger and around six cloves of garlic. After that, we're going to grab around two large tomatoes and we're going to dice them. And after that, we're going to grab some fresh coriander and chop that up for later. Over at the stove, we're going to fry off some cumin and coriander seeds. Then we're going to add our chicken into the pan and start sauteing until it gets some nice color. Then we're going to just set that aside and add in our onions. Start letting those sweat down. We don't want to get too much color on them before we add the ginger and garlic. And then continue to saute, adding the same seasonings as before and some tomato puree. Once everything's roasted off, add in those diced tomatoes, let those cook off with some water. And we're going to go ahead and let that simmer for about 10 minutes. Now to bring it all together, we're going to add in our lovely coconut milk. And once that's all mixed through, we're going to blend it and add it back to the pan, adding our chicken to finish cooking and to thicken up the curry. After it's reached the consistency you like, we'll switch off the heat and we're going to add in all that fresh coriander we chopped earlier for some green color and some extra freshness. All that's left to do is to pile it high next to some white rice and serve with a little bit more fresh coriander on top. Enjoy!